So how's everything been since two days ago? Amazing. Got some sun, some exercise, some meat in me, some Thai food, some boogie woogie. Me too. Uh Me too. Except for the, oh, actually, I even got some Thai. Yeah. (laughs) Some boogie woogie. We're on the same uh, sunshine. We're on the same page. I went out to Lake Marriott yesterday with one of the students. Dope. For some people. And it's a beautiful day, man. Beautiful. Yeah, good put this on silent yeah so it's uh yeah it's been it's getting towards it's getting summertime man it's beautiful after well this weekend is memorial day so it, it will be summertime yeah. yeah it doesn't even feel like a holiday is a holiday though <laughs> it's like oh it's memorial day i mean okay monday's off ever, let's uh it? yeah let's stay in <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing this weekend? Wow. This long weekend. Oh, I'm gonna uh I'm gonna stay in. I kind of want to go camping. Like when do it's... it? Yeah, I'm thinking about going. Steph and I are thinking about going tomorrow somewhere. Maybe uh maybe Tahoe. Tahoe. <laughs> That's a little far. <laughs> We're gonna do it. We're just gonna go. Yeah. You guys got you have mammoth down there. Mammoth Bear, is closer. Mammoth, like, um yeah. Topanga. National Park, yeah. Joshua Tree. You go to Red Rocks. You could go to like, uh, there's all sorts of places you can go, like places with rivers and lakes and stuff, man. That's what I want. I just want to think about going and tripping out somewhere, but I feel pretty good these days and my sleep is going well. So I don't know if I want to mess with it. I just had a housemate who had a little trip and it was a, it was a rough one. So I don't know if I want that right now. Mm. But when you have a bad trip, you never really regret it. You're just like, I shouldn't have done that. Well, that's a regret by definition. Well, you, but you like accept it. You ex- like, I think regret is like, the pain of regret is like not accepting that it happened. You learn and, from it. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you have a bad trip, like my first trip was a bad trip. And like, it's interesting, like, you know, you have bad experiences where you like with, with certain things like, like drugs or whatever. And you're like, I'm never going to do that again. But with like psychedelics, you're like, I wouldn't say I won't do it again. Right. Yeah, no, it's amazing how sometimes um, your body will feel different with different things. Like, like the, the three, so I can remember the three most euphoric times in my life, like the happiest, most joyful moments I've ever had, two out of the three was on something. Mm. So two out of the three, but one, one was, maybe we can talk about this. One was actually at Camp Grounded and it was just the most amazing weekend of community, right? Camp Grounded for, for, anyone who doesn't know, um, is a summer camp for adults held up in Mendocino, California, where you have a digital detox um, for a few days. Yeah, there's no technology. There's not even like watches, right? Yeah, you can't, you don't even, you don't know what time it is. You have mailboxes, you have nicknames, you're not allowed to talk about work or age. Uh, It's just creativity and games, team building stuff, but just also relaxing, you know, and, and, and uh, music, right. Unplugged music. And so anyway, yeah, it was just this, we had such amazing community and I was, you know, cozied up with, with friends and people. And um, I just remember we were at the snack bar and I bought um, through our credits, like just a, anonymously a bunch of like it's it's for everyone that was sitting at the tables around us and they were passed out and everyone was so thankful and I was you know I I had a a girl next to me and I had my friends and we were playing games and I just had this amazing euphoria it was the only time in my life that I felt as strongly as like what you know substance extra extra substances can make you feel without any of it yeah, because you're stripped and, away of all the shit that distracts you from reality. Yeah, it was. And that's what the psychedelics do too. Right? <laughs> like, 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. It, but it was amazing how, how you could do it without it. And I never thought that was possible, really. I mean, I don't know if people meditate and feel that, but um, it's, it was such a good lesson to see that you can, you can make that happen without those external factors that usually have negative effects. So, you know, there's no negative effect if it's natural. There's no side effect. Right. So I don't know. I think trying to recreate that would be pretty interesting. I would love to have, um, I would love to, for us to have our own like camp event. Yeah, we could do it. That'd be so dope. I have the spot for it. I have a friend who has a uh, bunch of land about an hour north of Las Vegas, Red Rocks. He creates dinners and there's a state little amphitheater there. We can do it. We just need to get a bus of people yeah. or just meet up there. I guess we can social distance it. We each have like RVs or something or tents. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be so dope. That'd be so fun. And that's like doing that and doing that right. You know, I think it matters the people you're around, what you want to experience. I think everybody has to be on the same plane, like the same mindset, the same values um, that they're going this. I think this is true with like any sort of like uh, any like, you know, going out to bars or something, right? Like going out with your friends. Like if you if multiple people in the group have different goals for that experience, it doesn't tend to go as well as you think. Like you're going to be slightly disappointed in something, right? If like you go out to a bar and your, your goal is to go be social and meet new people and bring them in. And then your friends are just trying to like be with each other. And like, that's their goal. Or one of your friends is just like, I'm just trying to drink. Like, it just creates a it creates a, a, a tension. It creates a bit of a, a non congruence with the whole group, and it it makes a, a worse experience. And I think, especially when something that's like that intimate, like that intimate, is like going out and camping and having that type of like let's unplug from reality, let's unplug from the rest of the world, and and like create our own reality and and just understanding you know the world we're in and and being a part of this small community that we just built, you know, like a, like a, a burning man type of thing, right. Or a, a camp grounded or, or anything like that. Right. Like if, if not everybody's on the same page, it's not going to be as cool. Right. I think you need yeah. to qualify. I think you need to qualify for that. Yeah. I think that's why people go out and they, have some goals right you'll call up your guy friends if you're single and be like let's go let's go hit on some girls let's go out and you're on the same page um but also some of our jaunty events has has um has some structure to it you know sometimes we have games or we have a book swap or uh you know i think yeah, you can see some events where they have a structure or they have some rules, right? I remember like in, in when we were in a fraternity back in the day, and you know this too, is you would have uh, themes, you know, even having a theme, like, to, you know, it's toga yeah. night yeah, right. where everyone, or Halloween. That's why we love Halloween. We have, we have you a know what it's about. Like everybody yeah. knows what the situation is. Like everyone knows what the situation is and you get more permission. I think you're right. A normal night out. There's so much, I mean, it depends on where you go, right? I mean, if you go to a dance club or, a, or if you go to a salsa club or if you go to a comedy show or a jazz club, right? Those have built in structures where it's like, I really just want to go dance. I really just want to go listen to music, but but yeah. you, I like what you said about having permission because like, yeah, you can go out, but what if you're at a, what if it's a bachelor party and that's the reason why you're going out? There's a different, there's a different expectation about what you guys should be doing, right? So people will act a certain way or they'll do certain activities or they'll go to a certain, per, you know, a certain place or talk to a certain, a certain type of people because of that specific, um, permission that they have or it's their birthday and they've got the you know i've gone out on my birthday and had a birthday sash that says birthday princess and like people treat you differently because 
they're because they're like, oh, it's your birthday. Okay, I'm gonna be, you know, I'm gonna be a certain way to you. Um, yeah, creating context, creating context for for why you're you're there. Yeah, you know, it's it it makes approaches easier. It makes being approached much easier it gives you're right it gives permission i mean uh you know i went i, I went to an event and you know someone that knows like someone that that's there that's doing magic tricks or something at some halloween party or whatever um you have a lot of context i think that's why a lot of people go into those things right is you have you can walk up to a group and be like here's a, you know i'm doing magic here's a trick or or i'm gonna walk up to a group and you have someone who's like handing things out right um, creating context is, that's a really interesting thing is how do you, and I think that's what we do with Jaunty, but we create context out of thin air without props or without even a, a theme, right? You, that's what frame is. Right. Right. You walk up to someone and you're like, Hey, this is a fun night. This is where you meet new people. This is where you can be curious. This is where, right. And so you can create that frame and the, you can create that frame and, and, and frame is very malleable in social situations. So, you know, you walk up and make it the most normal thing that you're talking to someone, then um, you can, you have a little bit of influence of, of what that frame would be is this is a fun time. You know, it'd be weird if you don't want to talk to me, right. um, even without props or costumes or um, an overlaying theme, you know, that's why, that's why I like tiki bars, you know, can be fun. It's because you can, or or like Smuggler's Cove, right? And in San Francisco, you can just walk in and start using a pirate accent. Right. Everyone's into it. Yeah. You know, and there's all these like things, you know, you look at this, like this box that looks like it shipped a bunch of rum. It says rum on it or something. And, and you can make a joke about that in a pirate accent and people are always all about it. Or even events that are like not necessarily thematic, right? Like, like you have thematic events like SantaCon, where like people are there being social <laughs> because it's SantaCon. It's like, oh, you know, everybody's in a Santa outfit, and like, you know, it's a Christmassy thing. But like, um, like non non thematic events, like say you go to an event that's like a speed dating event or a meetup, right? And and like the meetup isn't specifically about a theme. It's just like we're all just there to meet people and talk and so if you're if you go to a speed dating event and you don't talk to other people <laughs> right like it's going to be a weird time it's going to be a weird That's experience strange, right or like uh, on valentine's day i went to i went to an event uh at um some i think it was a monster or something one of those hotels in downtown san francisco and the, in the lobby they had it was like a little like a you got to find somebody that you connect with and then write a story about your connection that, you know, that night and mm, that's cool. why and why you should get a five day vacation in Cabo. Mm, I and, like it. And then they like, if you, you know, you turn it in, you win, uh, you get, you actually get the five days in Cabo and so. like a night stay at the hotel. And, um, and like, you know, people were there like talking to everybody because they were like, I need to find the right person that I can, you know, I could, or they were talking to people just because they were like, I need to find somebody to like. To, like That's amazing people. because it's amazing that a motivational switch, see, which it's permission, right? And so why can't somebody just give them, give themselves a motivator before going into a situation? You know, they create their own motivator. It's like, hey, there's, there's an investor over there. My, my motivation is, you know, better than winning a trip to Cabo, my motivation is, is, is having my company flourish or thrive. That's a motivator. There's someone attractive over there and I want, you know, I want a, a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Um, having a family. I mean, yeah. so it, I, I, I think maybe, you know. We get caught up in the context. We get caught in like... I think I think context gives permission and the 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 problem is not it, or is not whether or not there's context the problem is whether or not you feel like you have permission and yeah as you said like if you want somebody like ultimately everybody wants people in their lives they want relationships they want to they want to be happy and like 
I think when it comes to approaching strangers, uh, whether it be for dating, you know, you see some cutie and you want to go talk to them or just people who look like they're having fun. You want to go, you know, make some friends or the business context, right? Like, I think you need to give yourself permission by saying like, Hey, like I just want to make connect these connections. And I think that's going to make me happy. So I'm going to go over here and see if it works. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the skill sets are also important, right? What do you do if you say that and then you're frozen by sure. social anxiety or, but, you but don't ultimately know the next. mindset is what I'm talking, you know, what we're it, talking about. Here. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the question too, is I think people are more intelligent than they think. I mean, we're pretty smart beings. The fact that someone is listening to this or the fact that someone's in the room meant they were smart enough to survive and their ancestors were smart enough to survive. So so my point is, is that I think people can um, easily come up with stuff to say, have stories, and naturally connect with someone. And I think, I think it is, it's permission because that same person won't be able to tell the story about how they got ice cream yesterday to a stranger, but they will be an awesome storyteller to the roommate when they come home about it. Because it's the same skill, right? They have it in, inside of them. And so I think one of the, you know, the skills that we teach is like the, the internal status and the frame to where you can have that social freedom of, of just like you would be talking to your mom or dad or friend talking to someone at the bar. So it is permission. It is, it is context. And, um, I think you're right before going in is giving yourself permission, being like, these are friends, these are family, we're all humans. You know, that could, you know, it's, it's, I think we're scared of somebody new um, bringing something up that is repressed or negative, right? So if I'm going to talk to a friend at home, right, if I go home and talk to my, talk to a roommate or a boyfriend or a girlfriend, and I can tell them the story about my ice cream getting or whatever. I think we just feel that there's no chance that they're going to be like, Oh, and by the way, Eric, these are your issues. And if this, you know, like you're, right. you're detrimental to the human race. <laughs> right. Um, or just even a rejection of, I don't like you is, is very low in probability with someone like that, where there's a little bit higher of a chance with a stranger who might bring out, all these fears and so and yeah it's so ridiculous it's like well hey you have people who haven't done it and what are the chances of these new people doing that to you well as we found out with all of our students it's, it's really low people are in, in, unless you have bad intentions and your motivations are negative and you're doing something completely wrong and scary and eerie and you're coming off a bad way, which, which usually can be worked on ahead of time, that doesn't happen. So permission is key and, and that's belief system. That's frame in a nutshell, really. Right. I agree. I agree. These, uh, we just gotta, we gotta, I mean, it's so hard for a lot of people to work on that mindset though, you know, it's so hard to like, but it's so important Get into that frame. Oh, I know. You know it's like it the most important thing is mindset and frame because I mean, we have this whole world out here. I always think about it. We have this mind up here and we have this whole world out here. And it seems like everything that stops us is in this little cranial area right here where uh, most of the things that stop us um, are not in the real world. It's not like somebody asking you to stop talking to new people or right it's it's all in our minds and so i think mindset is the key to everything our consciousness is yeah is what stops us the most and yeah if you can just flip that switch man you know like i mean we it takes time to work on that but it's like yeah well once you have control over it you can create your own reality that's the that's like the power you know it's like you know walking into the movie theater without the ticket you're just like whatever just walk I'm, in you just this is my reality jedi mind trick it right yeah <laughs> this is how it's gonna be is that how they do it yeah you will let me in you will let me in you will love me <laughs> you all will love me you will not watch the movie you will watch me <laughs>
in fact no no you won't you won't even come into the movie theater <laughs> to, to check any tickets it will be my private movie theater <laughs> <laughs> so oh you you sent out a newsletter today yeah i sent that out i've been sending out more newsletters lately yeah i think um i uh am trying to supplement social and connection with our jaunty fam through online means. And so yeah, I, haven't read it. Uh, I just made a video. In yeah. So, so what we were talking about the other day. Yeah. Some, you know, I tried to put all three in a video and I just sat down on my living room floor here and, um, started talking and that was it. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to make better videos that I don't ramble on so much, but, I think I did okay, you know, I, I, and I don't mind that I'm kind of a rambler and um, I go on and I go off in different areas sometimes and it's hard to kind of stick with what I was trying to say because our brains go, <laughs> every, my brain goes everywhere. Yeah. But um, yeah, and so, 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 so media and videos and trying to figure out, what, you know, something that really um, motivated me today was was uh, getting messages and seeing these messages and seeing these new reports about how you know suicide uh we're getting we're getting a year's worth of suicide in four you know weeks. in four weeks yeah i read that same article this morning and so it's it's yeah exactly and so so that really motivated me um to reach out a little bit more and um and you know videos and and family and community. I mean, it, th- that, th- that's serious stuff. And uh, it just sucks because yeah, this sucks right now, but you know, it, it amplifies everything and, and, you know, who knows, God knows what people are feeling, but um, to go, to go that far down the, into the darkness, um, you know, it, it, that many people, it's just overwhelming. And I think, uh having some type of help or reaching out uh, knowing that this stuff will pass. It's just, you know, the, the future you, you know, the future you will be okay. If you, if you move on, if you continue and you work on things and that's what the video was a little bit about, even though it was about dating, but um, taking, taking one step at a time of undoing suffering, you know, I think that's a, I think it's something that we do a lot of it, John T. It's not just like, and, and we're like anti, like, oh, go be confident, right? We're anti that. What, what, what I think we're more about is undoing the fidgety stuff, you know, like undoing the negative thoughts, you know, and like uh, undoing the stuff that are hurting us. Well, maybe, maybe we should stop doing that, you know, and it takes a lot of work. And, um, and I think when people start standing up straight, opening up, talking more, pushing themselves, laughing more. Um, you can, you can push through some dark times and see some glimmers of hope if you need that. Yeah. Well also like, you know, in the way that we do things where we break it down and look at the things that we can control and we try to improve those like that, that's, that's another thing too. It puts the power into your hands. It gives you, gives you agency. So like when, people know what to start focusing on it gives them a directive it gives them a goal it gives them something to to think about other than their stressors right it's like our counting the blinks exercise like it's right. like it's it gives somebody a it gives somebody aim. what it gives someone an aim an aim yeah something to something to look at and and start gearing towards uh instead of thinking about what's behind them and what's, what's going to be dragging them down, right? You're looking, you're becoming goal oriented rather than outcome oriented. And like you, you're, you're starting to think about like, you know, the, the positive things, the, the, you know, the, you have an internal locus of control, right? You're, you're thinking about the things that I can do. And then you're also thinking about like what I can do right rather than what can go wrong. And that's when people, you know, I think people um, get caught in like, especially when they're depressed, like when you're already depressed, it's so hard to get into that mode. Right. But, you know, there are factors that you have to, you have to achieve, right? Like you have to feel like, I think the times I've been depressed, I've had to reach a 
moment of where I felt like I was rock bottom and look at myself and go and like, you know, obviously push everything out away from me, you know, push all the distractions. Like I'm depressed. So I can't, I don't even want to like distract myself with movies or video games or drinking or whatever. I'm depressed. Right. So I'm thinking, I have to just think about myself and go, man, I suck. What do I have to do here? You know, what, you know, what is it that makes me suck? And then finding some drive or at least some discipline to start like moving forward with things and like focus, you know, do a little, you know, take care of your body, exercise, do something hard that you know you can do. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard when you're in that really dark, dark place. And I think um, taking on just a little bit of responsibility, right? Um, you know, even if it's a friend uh, helping with something or um, if it's with yourself is, is cleaning up or doing a little exercise, like you said, having a little bit of responsibility that will, that will give you the motivation or give you a little serotonin and dopamine. And I mean, it's, it's hard because you know, when you're in that place, when you're in that fucking dark place, man, it's like, you, you, you truly don't believe that there's hope. Yeah. Like you truly don't believe anything will help. And you, and, and it's so many people have come out of that or has seen, um, want you know has seen uh the light after that that you have to believe that you just have to you have to say we'll get better this too shall pass well that, that's why that's where you're starting to use your rational mind right like your rational mind has seen other people get out of depression and, so it can happen and so so you know it can happen it's just you don't feel like it can happen and feeling is a bigger motivator than knowledge and that's why at that point, I don't think that's why I said the word discipline, because I don't think necessarily you have to be motivated to do it. You just have to be disciplined to do it. And, you know, to, the, the ability to be like, all right, I'm going to clean my house. I'm going to clean my, I'm going to start with my desk. I'm going to clean my desk. Once you clean your desk, you're like, oh, wow, this is like, I have, a, you know, I can feel like I can actually do more work at my desk now. I can, you know, I'm not cluttered. I'm not scatterbrained all over the place. Right. And then you move on to cleaning your living room and then you move on to cleaning your kitchen and then you move on to cleaning your bedroom. You clean your room and you make your bed. Oh yeah. Jordan Peterson. <laughs> Stand up straight. <laughs> with your right. head back. Uh, yeah. Or with your shoulders back. Shoulders um, back. Stand up straight. You know, <laughs> don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but you you got to do it. You better do it, bucko. <laughs> He's the man. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm actually using one of his books, two of his books, to, to raise my mic. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> as we speak. Uh, but yeah, so so that's sad, and I think being there for people, you know, and it's it's that's kind of what motivated that the um the video so yeah i think another reach out and that, that's why in, you know even in the beginning of the quarantine the, one of the first things i sent out was if you need to talk you know here you, you know here's the schedule once like here's free free sessions with me for like 15 minutes or 40 and 40 minutes and um yeah something i was worried about like a long time ago because uh hey if you want to bring someone down all you have to do is isolate them from people you know, and just isolate them. Don't let them go outside. And, um, and then, yeah, the financial stuff and, you know, and, and, um, if you don't have someone living with you, it's really hard. If you don't have someone or if you're not seeing someone, it's, it's hard, you know? So yeah, even helping one person makes a big difference. You know, hopefully all of our community is, is standing you know, yeah. standing with each other. And so, I mean, I, I'm uh, two degrees removed from somebody I found out this morning from somebody who committed suicide because of this. Um, uh, I, I know somebody whose relative worked with somebody who committed suicide because she was alone. She's lonely during this time. And 
it's so sad that like you know now now thinking about that add you know putting putting this into putting what we just said into like practice it's like okay so we do need we do know that we need to be with people we need to connect and like it, even if that's like taking an online class or going to a you know an online happy hour and just tr- putting yourself out there to make a conversation like that's going to be so much more helpful than just like isolating <clears throat> yeah i know i'd like to think that uh hopefully you know our i know a lot of our for instance our alumni and students and people maybe we've touched along the way um have while we could you know while we were able to go out and you know something we always push was like create your social circle have you know and and people would come in talking about like oh i don't have a boyfriend or girlfriend but the first thing i would be able to, i'd ask is be like okay i hear you however how's your how's your support group how's your you know something i always say in our one-on-ones is how's your friend side of things too how's your friends and family side and so um having that friends and family social circle uh, is one of the cornerstones that will help you create all the other things socially as well. But I think um, I'm hoping, you know, people, people are, 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 are glad or happy or, or, or have gratitude toward the relationships that they've made in the last, you know, whatever, seven years, 10 years that we've been teaching this uh, more than that. But, um, uh, and and that's what's helping them get through this. You know, it's like always get those friend circles. And so when something like this happens, so, you know, it's interesting because if someone is not making friends or having a good social circle, um, maybe something that goes in their mind is, oh, I always can go out and create one. And this is a kind of interesting way of looking at it is, I, oh, I, there's, you know, there's always another you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday cycle going out in the bars, or there's always another meetup that's going to happen in person. So if someone's feeling isolated and lonely and they haven't put the effort in and they haven't gone out and met someone for whatever reasons, I mean, they might have good reasons, but um, something that might go, you know, something that it's something they could push off, right? Oh, I can go next week. I can go next month. So now when you take that away, right? You take the ability to even go out and make friends and, or at least lessen it. Um, that's going to, I mean, I understand, you know, that you're, you don't have your support group and you can't go create one. And so that's, um, that's tough. So I think maybe coming out of this, people will make it a point to create that strong social circle. You know, we, yeah, yeah so. we, we always, we always talk about it. We're like, Oh, this is the, the skills we talk about and i i I don't want this to come off as like you know like just and i told you so but like um the things we say in our workshops it's like well this will be the difference of you getting invited to one new year's party versus five new year's parties you know And, and not that new year's parties are important but or five birthdays a month versus zero birthdays a month that you get invited to, right? And so these little things will create differences and those differences are you go out and you push yourself, you decide what you want, you start opening up and being vulnerable and, 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 and connecting with people and starting conversations and yeah, getting rejected by some, but having some laughs with others, you know? And so I think, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's harder to do now because you're, you're connecting with people digitally, except for people you know, other than, um, you know, if you really push yourself and go meet people and ask people to introduce you to people and um, you can get on digital meetups and maybe build connections there. Um, and then, you know, things are going more and more into the in-person you can you can go to grocery stores and beaches and parks and stuff and maybe talk you know talk to people now but yeah the, you have to take the first step take yeah. that first step yeah i agree people are i think this is this is a moment this is we're at we're at a moment and people are people are definitely starting to get tired of of the way things are and they're like okay they're starting to reject the like 
the idea that they need to stay inside all the time and stay so far away from people. Like I walked to the park the other day, yesterday, and um, just pe- some people approached us. Right? Like it was, it was great, you know. That's and, awesome. And like we were, we were. I was with a student. And we were specifically going to like meet more people. And like on the first group that we approached, like they probably would have like it was getting to a point where they would have let us sit down and just hang out with them. Yeah. And within, you know, just three minutes of conversation, like, and they were, you know, they were driving conversation with us and, you know, it was really, it was awesome. It was like, it was an awesome experience of like, yes, it's great to see people, you know, like rejecting that idea that you have to be literal, like, outside of literally socially distant, like, you know, metaphorically socially distant of like the, like being, being antisocial. Right. So totally. And for people in that situation who are not um, happy or content with their, with their, with their social circle, that's where you can, you get someone's phone number, you get someone's business info or Instagram or whatever, TikTok, And you, 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 you get a contact you, you get a contact, you get contact information to see them again. And you can, you know, you can, you can um, grow those relationships, you know, even online, it, if you meet them in person and, and you know, you're not sure if they are interested, in, you're not hosting things yet. You can, you can connect with them and you can build those things. And I think a lot of people are starving for that. I agree. So. Yeah. So this is a great time. This is a great time to start meeting new people. I mean, it's always a great time, but like, this is still a great time to start meeting new people. And I think now because intimacy is so much more readily available, it's, it's even greater of a time to like get connections. Yeah. Cause everyone is realizing how, I mean, what if friendships meeting new people changes, like instead of, meeting someone and people maybe flakiness like will, i was just thinking that i was like flaky maybe probably maybe work. flaking will go down you know it's like hey this is another person like we were all in isolation who knows you know like maybe there'll be a curve where where will there'll be low flakiness and then when things the more things go back to normal you know who knows it depends on options and your your situation but um but yeah, I mean, I think it's a great time. It, like we keep saying this, I think it's it's a good time to reset your social um, life, your social situation, you know, in all areas. And so hopefully people can look at it like that rather than just doom and gloom. But yeah, well, that's what we're here for. Hell yeah. Speaking of, you know, the doom and gloom, what, let's uh, let's look more at this uh, this thing that you post up the the rest of that um, questionnaire that you sent out. Okay, I think we left off at have it up. So we left off with this question. The current situation makes me made me realize I need to eval- reevaluate my business network. Okay. Um, um, and so it's getting towards socialization and how much socialization engaging. So would you like to, would you like to continue talking about that? Yeah. So, uh, the current situation makes me realize I need to reevaluate my business network. So this is 50, 50, 50, almost exactly. Wow. In yes, no, which is, which is interesting. Uh, you know, because I wish, man, I wish there was a, a, like a, a slot for them to have expounded upon that. Yeah. And give it I, the reasons. The yeah. current situation should we realize I need to reevaluate. I spelled reevaluate wrong. <laughs> reevaluate. Uh, reevaluate my business network. So yeah, 50.8% said no, 49.2% said yes. So I guess people... You know, it can go either way, you know, and I think this might be, this, this might just be the, the people who are having hardships with, with work because of all this versus, I mean, someone's going to be a, a hell no, I don't need to reevaluate this. If they're like, a lot of people are loving the situation work-wise. I mean, if you worked at like a, 
a big company that held all their benefits. Now you can just work at home and things are more relaxed and you get to be with the kids and, and family and you get breaks whenever you want. And right. And every, you get paid the same with no commute. Yeah. I mean, those commute people thing gonna, is definitely huge. Yeah. Those people are going to be happy. Yeah. Uh, right. And then the other half, so it looks like half and half, half were affected and half weren't. Um, I was definitely affected. Yeah. I mean, even with, with some good contacts, I mean, um, or a decent network Well, in the Bay area, you know, okay. Um, the next question was before the pandemic, I engaged in pleasurable socialization for X hours of hours a week. So before the pandemic, we have 25 percent that had less than three hours i like i like how we put in the the word pleasurable here mm. because then it'll pleasurable. it'll differentiate like oh well just hanging out with my like son or just hanging out you know that or hanging out playing video, you know, watching that, watching that my can't friend be pleasurable what <laughs> playing video games right well i was gonna add the video game part but like yeah, you know what? If it's pleasurable to you, it's pleasurable, right? And so that's it. So less than three positive affect. Yeah, yeah. So um, and then we have a third, exactly, in the three to five hours, and then we have a third exactly in five to ten hours, and we have eight point five percent in ten plus hours. So before the pandemic, it was pretty even with um, less than three, three to five, and five to 10. Pretty even with those. And then um, a little bit less in the, only a little bit less in the uh, less than three. During the pandemic, we had a big change here. I engaged in pleasurable socialization for, so now the less than three became 53%. So no surprise, I guess, but, um, Wow. People are not in pleasurable social situations, obviously, I guess. You know, again, you can't go out, restaurants, parties, hangouts, whatever. Uh, 28% went three to five, 11.7% five to seven, and 6.7%. Um, so the 10 plus hour crew just went down a little bit. So I guess I mean so the super social people are still super social. Yeah, they like, they probably dro- a few of them dropped down a little bit, maybe to the five to ten. But yeah, the super social people, unless you know someone. Well, yeah, you I never mean we'd have to we'd have to see if it was the same people, right? Right, we can't do that. It was all anonymous. So, yeah. uh, right, unless you know somebody now can't go to work and they, you know, they, they live right next to like a huge park with a bunch of social distancing parties or right? their, or their so <laughs> pleasurable socialization happens at work. Right. Right. Or, or the opposite. Right. If, if, if it's going down. Right. right. So, okay. Um, so yeah, that's no surprises. And then we'll go to the, to the one after that. What was the biggest surprise or realization that the pandemic brought on socially for you? So a lot of these are, you know, how much I miss going out. Someone said I'm not as social as I thought. Um, so some people, well, some of these are long. Let me, um, that I felt more lonely than ever. You know, my closest friends are around the world, but wasting time online becomes a problem um, because I want to be connected to people. Isolation can wear down even the most introverted people. Um, my realization is I don't have a lot of friends. Many of my friends didn't even want to see me at social distance. Interesting. Mm, that's kind of a, a realization with friends, right? Hopefully they're at least happy to do zoom and, um, yeah, but that's still sad. It's still know? sad if you're in the same, yeah. If you're in the same, uh, unless they're freaked out about, you know, they really just don't want to, they're just, completely on lockdown um that people want to connect more so in person 
it has ushered in a new first step in the dating process. That step is a Zoom date. Okay. So maybe it's, I, you know, m maybe if someone has been dating online and never dated offline, this is, this, this might be like a, this could be good for them, right? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> because now, well, what, well, what, what I mean is, is let's say if you're, if you're, if you're nervous to go on a date, is a Zoom date, for the average person, do you think, is a Zoom date more um, nerve-wracking than a real date? Or is a real date more nerve-wracking than a Zoom date? Yeah, I wouldn't be able to answer that for myself, you know, because I wouldn't be nervous either way. Because um, I've done, I've been, I've done phone dates and like video call dates. Um, which is basically a Zoom date uh, right now, but I haven't done. Yeah, I would think I'm, that. I would it's think probably that, more comfortable because you're in your own place and yeah, you, you can I would leave think whenever you want. You can. This oh, would be oops. heaven. I mean, not heaven. This would be like a nice step. Yeah, this is. I think what the person might have been saying is this. This opened up the door to Zoom dates being accepted, right? right. And so. Now I can do a Zoom date, but here's the problem is a Zoom date might set up a more nerve wracking situation if you are not keen on meeting in person to... It, it can elongate the process. Um, with, with online dating, it does help you, I would say it does help you like filter people more, more easily. Um, because th then it previously would have because obviously like if you're just texting each other um you're not really getting an idea of who that person is what that person's personality like but if you're having a phone call or a zoom date it's going to be you're going to be able to kind of gauge kind of their personality and their status and kind of how they are but it can ruin attraction i think uh, or it can ruin like certain certain aspects of like the intimacy where you just get comfortable in the online realm. And like some people I think are afraid to lose that. And so they just want to elongate, elongate, elongate. Yeah. Right. Uh, exactly. It could, it can create a lot of friend zone, but Hey, if you do it right, you know, it could work. But what if the person doesn't like smell or taste great later? Right. It's yeah. such a, it's such a, it's such a letdown if there was no like physical or chemical. Um, yeah. Chemistry there. Totally. So interesting. Yeah. I mean, that's all we can do, I guess, if both people do not want to do the walks or the parks or the beaches or the hikes, you can do hikes. But yeah, I mean, at one point you have to get together in person and what if that sets up a much more nerve wracking situation because a more stressful situation because you have, it builds it up, right? It builds up meeting in person a little bit more. Right. Um, I don't mind being inside. Yeah, some people, a lot of people wrote this, you know, other than missing seeing family, some friends and travel, I don't actually mind the social distancing. It's nicer that the city is a little quieter now. I'm not really a recluse at heart. I love being around people is what I realized. I enjoy being alone. So does, there's a lot of, um, I miss people and I find it hard to reach out because I don't know how to talk about things that are positive or deep. And so, yeah, some vulnerability or storytelling or um, empathy, right? Who knows? Um, I have been days, days have been going fast with tasks at home and planning for a career that is creative. How much of a routine I actually had and how much I need interaction. Realizing mm -hmm. what your routine was. Yeah, this thing definitely, you throw people out of their routine and things get stressful. Totally. Creatures of habit, right? I mean, th this has a way of messing, 
with people's um, sleep and circadian rhythm. And, you know, if you're not careful, um, someone wrote no big surprises that I'm greedy for time alone. And I dread the end of this quieter, slower living. So most people in power are more willing than I would have thought to not take rational risks. So problems will necessarily get addressed in a more bottom up way. No maskers are fucking disgusting. Okay. Uh, how much I missed working at the office, traveling for work and socializing after work. Um, I've seen a few of these too, is how people's work colleagues are one of their biggest social networks you know personal it's like they use their work network for their personal social life um which is fine if 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 the people that you work with you like and they work well with you and yeah but then um, you're you're just letting that be it's just the circumstance right right convenience mm -hmm. um that my partner and I are happy when we just spend time together. Many of our problems prior to quarantine were related to external social issues. That's interesting. External social issues. So yeah, maybe each other's friends or getting invited to stuff or um, could be family, right? Now you can't go see the in-laws. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... Oh, yeah, oh, go ahead. The same person. I also realized how much I miss my friends from my home state. Okay. Um, it, it sounds like most of these people are saying that they're, the, the biggest realization is they're kind of taking a, a more concrete look at what their social life was before. And the, like that's the realization of like what the reality was. Oh, I didn't actually have problems in, in my relationship that couldn't be fixed by putting attention on it. I could, I, or, oh, I didn't have as good of friends as I thought I had, or I didn't have as many options as I want, I, I thought I had, or I will want to have, right? So they're, they're realizing what they want more and they're realizing there's, I think it's that they're spending more time thinking about relationships now. Yeah, this is a great way to assess your relationships because A, you're going to be stuck with them at home for a long time. You're going to see a lot of them. So uh, you have more time to work on things and fix things and get to know each other and go deeper you also have more times to see differences totally and friends too you, you realize who cares who cares about you which is yeah my friends don't want to see me now <laughs> oh yeah they talk to me they want to that's all near it's, me it's harsh they, they you know they're not replying they feel like i have leprosy <laughs> right Ugh. how much i love interaction with like-minded people Honestly, the pandemic didn't change the way I think. I tend to naturally self-isolate, and this just proved it further. So, you know, a lot of people like it. Uh, they, don't, they don't like the awful stuff probably going on about it, but um, they like, you know, I think uh, there's, a, there's a piece in everyone that likes to, to be home and relaxing and, you yeah. know, no oblig less like ob obligations to attend things maybe you know feelings of resentment and anger towards my friends and loved ones hmm. somebody wrote so yeah the kind of pressure cooker of all this and you know and, and yeah that's something yeah, well, where if you start feeling resentment and anger it's also you know it's a something that needs work within within ourselves with that too and just how we communicate as well right like you know obviously like based from our perspective like we're we're not we don't really have resentment and anger usually because we have the ability to bring stuff up when we have a problem with it right we, we have the ability to be assertive and 
you know, that's, I think, I think that's what a lot of people forget about is like how they communicate. And like, that's a confounding factor in this communication. Like, yeah, there's, it's one thing to have a relationship with somebody, but it's another to communicate and have good communication in that relationship and being able to be intimate with that person and being able to um, depend on people. You know, these are all like confounding factors in this, I think. Totally. Yeah, how much I miss going out. I love being a homebody. Um, somehow I've been talking to someone and I'm hoping we can build a relationship. Hmm. Nice. Hope that's going well. How truly awkward I can be socially, but also how great it is to be with family. So that's also, an, it's nice not having a full calendar. <laughs> Uh, I know that one. <laughs> yeah. That I need to create a better life. Ooh, that's a big one. Motivator. Nice. Love it. I mean, that's shining the light on, you know, it's, it's, uh, seeing this stuff. It's, it's motivating, you know, it's, this is again, breaking yourself down and really seeing what, what is going on and then rising from the ashes. Right. Yeah. I think people are taking like a, because of this, you can start to take like a bird's eye view of your life and go, what direction is this heading? And like, what, which direction do I want it to go? Yeah. yeah. Pick, pick a good aim and take one step toward that and then assess how socially freeing it is to not feel obligated to meet people at all or live. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. See, this is some of the, to not feel obligated. Like I understand that, but the live thing, mm. Yeah, this person. Um, Sounds yeah. depressing. It is a little depressing, and well, it's all this is honest stuff, and you know, yeah. this is why I'd love to reach out, find positive stuff that people can find. Um, don't have a lot of friends was a realization. Um, I yeah. So let's see, let's see. Let's let's go through some of this. Uh, I'm not sure how to meet people virtually. So, yeah, meeting people virtually. Well, I mean, you know, meetup is virtual, but um, finding events, you know, yesterday or two, two days ago, we did a, it was two days ago. Yeah, that cocktail party we had. Um, we met, you know, there was like 12 Wait, people. Cocktail on party? That. Yeah. Remember? At the end of our last session i have to leave to go to this cocktail party oh okay a virtual cocktail party and so finding events like that getting this is why this is what friends are for inviting you to things like that um wish i had gotten an invite yeah well maybe if you had some good friends craig <laughs> <laughs> There's so many, there's so many of these zoom things that I'm just saying no to so though. many. I'm just saying no to like all of them. I'm like, I don't really care so much about zoom. It actually was great. Like, you know, it's, uh, people had their, we were in people's kitchen. You know, what's cool about it is we were in people's kitchens, you know, kind of, you know, when you go to a party, everyone congregates around the kitchen. Mm, yeah. So since it was a cocktail making party, you know, uh, my, my girlfriend has the setup where, the tables in the kitchen, it's like, you know, a kitchen, right? Or the table's right next to the kitchen. So we have the kitchen right next to where the Zoom was going on. The table was filled with all the ingredients that they told us to have. And so, and everyone else had the same thing. You know, some people had their kitchen island. They were standing in the kitchen and the kitchen island was covered in their, in their, in their um, cocktail um, ingredients. And so if you, you felt like you were in other people's kitchen, right? And so you get to, you get to see t 10 people's kitchens and everyone's working together. So I would, I would assume a, a cooking class would be similar. Yeah. And I think that would be, a, you know, I, I think there's something to being in, in kitchens on Zoom. You know, it feels like that's where people congregate anyway for parties. So that, there could be something with that is, you know, having a kitchen party. Yeah. where you're eating kitchen cooking. kitchen is always yeah like you said people congregate and also the kitchen is like 
when you have like usually a social gathering is like it revolves around having food right like if if you have somebody to your house right or people m multiple people to your house it's like a barbecue it's a party it's a dinner party it's totally. at least we're gonna have dip and chips or something you know like we're gonna have drinks and dips and stuff and that's all in the kitchen and so people are always congregating in the kitchen. It's also like a cooler environment, like literally, um, like if you have like tile floor and stuff, like, you know, it's just like, I mean, obviously there's the heat of like the oven and stuff like that, but usually like your kitchen has a, has windows or, or like, uh, and like tile and stuff. So it's like a, it's kind of a different environment from being in this cozy living room. Right. It's not as it's not a cozy environment, but it's a safe environment. It's a breaking bread environment. Yeah. You know, it's like you break bread, you eat, you share food. So yeah, maybe that that could be a thing. So th that would actually be one. I I would I would um put a stamp on that recommendation is is cooking classes. That could be something that you can. I mean, even even you know you have to pay for them. It's like. Fifteen thirty dollars, whatever for a Zoom cooking class, um, and if you have someone that you're quarantining with, or if you don't, but if you do, you can you can both do it together with the Zoom going on, or or even if you know if you're solo, that you get to meet all the people and and ask questions. So so this is something uh, I was very engaged, and you know my girlfriend was 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 like you know I was being a little not pushy, but I was kind of getting in front of the camera, showing everybody what I was, everybody was in their own world a little bit when they, when the instructions were going on, but I was trying to be a little more engaging and I would ask questions. I would, I would turn off, you know, I, if we were going to blend food or talk, or we were going to use the sink, we would hit the, we would hit the mute button, but I would also try to un, unmute ourselves as much as we can. So it would make me think of questions and say hi, and I would be waving at people and, you know, some, if someone came late, I would just wave at them and say hi to them. Um, it's a little much. It's more than I would do maybe usually. But I think under the circumstance, being in the kitchens with everyone, it just felt, you know, it just felt right. And I think people enjoyed it. And I, at, you know, at the end, I stayed and we asked questions. We drank our cocktails. It felt like a little cocktail party. So if you can ask questions you know she was going a little bit fast so i just said hey hold on one second like did you say you know a fourth a cup of sugar or a fourth a cup of honey what was it right and so um and she was in, in this, she's like oh yeah i'm going fast i've been doing this you know like twice a day or whatever but like um she slowed down and it became more of a okay you got it show me your cup and i would hold my cup up and you know we would see where we were so Anyway, um, do that. Let's see, what else do people say? Um, I felt more lonely than ever. I quickly hooked up with a Bumble date for the duration. Nobody seems judgy about it. Good. Cool. They shouldn't. Um, judging. <laughs> Who would be judging? Yeah, I think jealous Who's people, around to judge? <laughs> jealous people would be judging. Um, that people want to connect more so in person. Uh, more people are using virtual networks for planned session. I'm not really a recluse at heart. I love to be around people, something that I realized. Hmm. So I enjoyed spending time with my older teen, young adult kids while at home. That's good. So that's a gist of these answers. Or a lot of them, actually. Yeah, but but yeah, I mean it's 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 mixed, and that's good, and it's good because uh, I mean it shows setting up. You know, I I think it shows how you set yourself up, right? Yeah. You see how you set yourself up. That's, you that's see, what I'm saying. You're looking at that that bird's eye view of your life, yeah, seeing where it's going and realizing what your life was, you know, what your social life was like. Yeah. It really shows your social investment of the last five, 10 years. That's an interesting way. You know, it's kind of like a stock market um, collapsing and you see how much money you had in stocks versus bonds or something, right? You see, 
or how much money you had in cash versus stocks or risky stocks, right? So it's a, it's a, yeah, it's like a, it's like a marker. It's a measure of your, of how well you did socially in the last five, 10 years. So hopefully, um, and, and Hey, you know what, five, 10 years from now, or even three years from now, you can build up whatever you want. Right. See, probably, you know, yeah. it's probably quicker than money. Oh, totally. So, totally. Yeah. You could do it in months. You can do it in months. Right. Yes. So yeah, you know, that's, that's powerful, man. There's not many things that make you assess what your social and investments were in the last five years so what are people going to do about it with this next question after the pandemic i plan to so engage. after the pandemic i plan on engaging in pleasurable socializing for so the majority almost well 46 percent said a little more time than now Th a third 33 percent said much more time than now okay so that's already like 75, 70 something percent or 80%. Oh yeah. Almost yeah. 80% is more than now. Okay. Well, obviously. And then, I mean, I right. think that's pretty, yeah. What about more than before? That would have been a good question too. Yeah. Well, you can kind of compare those, right? And then how many people said less? Uh, only 6.6% .6 said much less. And only 14.8% said the same amount of time than now. I wonder what the reasoning is behind that of like wanting to socialize much less than now. Very small percent, only four people. But I'm, I'm still curious. Out of the 61 responses. Like if those are the people who are really depressed or, you know, what, what's going on with them? Um, well... Yeah, that's, or maybe that they're is, just going. Maybe they're the people who are at the ten plus hours a week. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe because they're home, they have more socializing. Maybe, yeah, they're because they're working less or something. Yeah. How have you seen your social bonds with your friends or partners change during the pandemic? Ooh, open, open answer. Okay. Um, some have become stronger. Some have become weaker. Uh, I live with immune compromised people and haven't really been able to go out except for four grocery runs. Only people I've seen are family. Yes. Cutting some relationships out. Good. That's what you want. Cut out anyone who is not valuable or helpful or loving or, or who is toxic to you. Not a real friend. Someone you can't be assertive with someone who can't be there for the good times and the bad times. Good friends become better. Worse friends become worse. Interesting statement. Hmm. hmm. Yeah. I mean, th that's something I would expect everyone to write, right? Like, but it might not work that way where, well, what do they define as a good friend, right? Like what does it mean to be a good friend to that person? And then, Maybe they're reevaluating that now, right? If they say if they say something other than good friends are better and bad friends are worse, and you know, right? Yeah, because I think this is I think this is added on with like that intimacy thing that I talked about. Mm hmm. Yeah, maybe less um, response rate or care. Yeah. More friends with more calls with family, and I realize I can be with someone and not get sick of them, which is a newer thing for me. Awesome. That's awesome. Um, it's quite a bit easier from where I stand to get past the small talk stage and dig deeper into shared interests. Yeah, you know, how are you doesn't really work very well these days. Right? How are you doing? Instead of instead of the standard well, like, good, how are you? How are you? How, how are you? This? <laughs> right. It's not like everyone has to add something. You can't. You have to be like, how are you relative to the situation? How are you hanging in there? How are you with everything going on? So you you know, it's so weird. You can't be like, how's it going? You know, no one's gonna. Good doesn't work. That's why. 
right. <laughs> can, but you know, it's like good, but we're in a fucking pandemic. Yeah. Okay. So um, you have to go deeper, which is great. That that that's a good that's a good silver lining there. I become much closer to certain friends. Hard times can make very strong bonds. Yep. Yeah. Yes, I've seen some change in a positive way. I feel like I have become closer with friends. Cool. So I think these are people that have invested in friends in the past, have had um, secure relationships with them, and they were healthy relationships, and they're getting closer. I mean, that, that's this is what we want to see, especially from like alumni, right? Minimal. Okay. Yes, they've gotten stronger again. More online contact. Early on, very stressed. Now, since I have been carjacked and needed them deeper, really deeper. Hmm. That's not good. Someone got carjacked. Yeah, that sucks. Jeez. We take each other less for granted. Great. We've grown further apart, but only because there is no face to face communication. Well, you know, that might not be the only reason. You should be able to connect with them and FaceTime and, you know, a real friend hopefully will be there and stick around. But, but I can relate to that. There's a lot of, a lot of colleagues that, well, I don't know, you know, some colleagues have become friends with me and some colleagues have disappeared. Right. So yeah. closer to my friends relationship with partner is not going well. Well, that's a le- that that's something to look at, and that's something hopefully they can work through and talk about and understand why. Curious as to like the people who are partnered, like how they're handling it. Like, do they live together? Do they um, sp- do they see each other often? Are they maintain still maintaining like not seeing each other, like quarantining or whatever, or is it long distance? Like, interesting. Yeah. I'm assuming most, I'm just assuming, who knows, but like most are quarantined together in some sense, whether they live together or not. What's that? Most are probably quarantined together in some sense. They're, there's, yeah. They might not be living together. We talk via social media and phone instead of in person. Yep, that's the big change. Um, Our bonds have changed a bit. Most people in my circle have been keeping to themselves. Okay. Uh, I think, yeah, I think Maslow's hierarchy, people start working on survival a little more, but I think we're past that hopefully stage. And um, maybe people you surrounded yourself with might be more neurotic or or more emotionally stable, right? Or, um, you know, you might have the same, if they're all like that, right? Then you probably have a similar friend type, you know? And that's interesting too, is, is, is having a friend type. Mm. I was talking to this with my girlfriend and she's like, yeah, most, most of my friends are this way. And, you know, they're like all these characteristics, like all of them, almost, well, you know? Okay. Yeah, it's I mean, that makes sense. Like, I, I know people who, well, that people could just be, similar. that's what you're comfortable with, right? Or that's like, the, the, they have a hobby that you like, or, you know, or they have a similar background as you. Right. So. Yeah, it makes sense. You're going to, you're going to probably get along with people that have, um, maybe not romantically, romantically is different. You yeah. want a little bit of opposites in romantic, but in certain things. Not opposites completely, obviously, but some some hedges to help you with stuff to grow. But with friends, I think you want similarities, yeah. Somebody wrote, what friends? Right? And so that's, again, okay. you know, investing in relationships early, earlier. And you can learn how to do that or you can get better at it. Yeah, my heart goes out to to um, people who are alone right now. 
totally or people who are alone ever it's about the same we're all trying to keep in touch as much as our schedule allows us yeah people are checking in with each other and neighbors are looking out for each other to make sure they have things like toilet paper and a little food i plan on getting a new pet now for my child for my children and and i to have that company as well i have heard that there are more domestic disputes that are happening now as a single mom i appreciate that the stress is different however once the pandemic is over and i would i would like to date eventually i have a hunch there will be a baby boom this winter and will continue for a while so it makes me happy to think of all the love that's going on with the worldwide nesting <laughs> that's cool yeah there will be a maybe a baby boom from this yeah yeah baby boom and then maybe some breakups right we'll see i mean that that's yeah. going to be interesting well, I mean, like, I think I it's going to be like people reevaluating their relationships, like right. the, the ones that are bad. They'd be like, okay, like, because, you know, like domestic violence is on the rise. Domestic violence, divorce. Yeah. So, so we'll go up. Um, was trying, I was trying to start connections online through the pandemic, but every challenge was in my way as I traveled further from home to be with family. Being far from home was additionally was additional unexpected had additional unexpected challenges and circumstances during the pandemic. Okay. Yes, I've reconnected with people from the past and lost touch with others who you, I used to see. I'm closer with close friends and family and don't talk to acquaintances at all. The more we talk, the more we really wish to see each other. Yeah, it's a tease if you're not able to see people. Um, nothing much has changed. I've lived remotely and was country hopping a lot before this. Is before this, so it's weirdly the same for me. Hmm. Well, I mean, even if you're country hopping, like you should be able to be social there, you know, in the places that you're at. I was right. just talking to somebody yesterday and he said, you know, he loves solo traveling. You know, like he's got anxiety when he's at home and he's trying to be social. But when he's solo traveling, he's got that context that we talked about, like the contextual, um, you know, uh, permission to like yeah. be more social. And so he, he's, uh, he, he tends to be more social when he's, when he's out solo traveling. But um yeah, so like I can imagine like, and I, I know a lot of people feel that way. A lot of people, you know, feel more free when they're traveling because they feel, you know, more free to be social. But uh, so like the fact that you're traveling and you're not being social <laughs> or you're not being as social um, is, is kind of interesting too. Yeah, I like, mean, it depends where and interested. what the pandemic is like there and what the rules are, but yeah, but right, I mean... Depends if you're doing hostels or whatever. One second. Yeah. I had to open my door and get some air. More yeah. Light too. Oh yeah, that light is <clears throat> Okay. Um, the importance of having authentic connection with so very few people is immeasurably valuable. Hell yeah. Yep. My strengths of str my bonds have strengthened. Not much. I feel closer to my friends, which is a good change from before. I think it's definitely given me assurance of who my real friends are. Yes, sir. Ma'am. I'm closer to them socially, less bonds. For some people, I run out of interesting things to talk about because I've just been home. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have like a lot, man, you can create stories, I guess, create some experiences that, that can make you assess your day. Right. And let's see if there's something you can learn, you know, take the cooking class and talk about that. But it's true. You can't talk about your uh, exciting day that you had sometimes. No, some closer, some less. I'm still close with people 
It stayed the same, a little less contact with friends, telephone. Yes, more relaxed with my partner, closer and re-engaged with old friends. So more relaxed with my partner, that's cool. I guess if you see each other more and you get more comfortable with each other and you kind of open up and, you know, you can um, start pooping with the door open again. Things get comfortable. There we go. So what do they want to see from us? Oh, okay. Um, there's there's more of these, but yeah, let's go to it's, that. I, I feel like they're they're going to be all very similar. I'll see if there's any uh, anything specific. Uh, I feel the bonds are weaker because socialization has to be more planned and is less rewarding because we can only do remote activities. Mm, yeah, it takes away the spon- mm. po- spontaneity. Spontaneity, if you're not like approaching people, right? My married friends don't reach out as much, and I feel separated from them. Plus, everyone's opinion on what is acceptable social what is what is acceptable social contact is different some very conservative and some too casual yeah it's hard to and you have to have a assertive conversation with what, what do you say about it or what they say about their married friends or family uh, my married friends don't reach out as much and i feel separated from them wow i guess family, families and stuff families yeah. are hunkering down yeah okay what would i like more from jaunty relationship advice Number one. Number two, relationship advice. My boyfriend is giving me a hard time. Um, Not sure at this point with the pandemic and me not being able to go out. Where do I practice these skills when I'm not even going out? Zoom does not count. Everywhere. Yeah, Uh, everywhere. I mean, you are going less chances. You are getting groceries. I mean, unless you're ordering only. Hopefully you have some neighbors... You hopefully are going on walks and people are walking their dogs. We're currently having less um, opportunities, but that just means that we got to make them more power. Like, you know, they're just, those opportunities are more important. We have to take priority in them. So we have to like, you know, think about the people that you interact with at the grocery store, the people you interact with um, as your neighbors. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, host host stuff. You, you, yes, it has to be digitally, but Zoom does count. And if you're the type of person who's fine with meeting with a one person or two people or whatever, and you find people who are in the same boat, then you can, right? Yeah. You know, um, you can invite friends over and. I don't know, talk from the balcony down to the, you know, whatever. Yeah, or like go to a park and just sit on the grass six feet away from each other. um, Open air stuff is fine. Or it's at least better than in in a building, you know? Yeah, you're actually safer. Okay. Um, Advice related to the difficulties of finding people interested in, in the activities you're interested in. So I think one of the best things you do is you host an activity you're interested in, right? You go through your Rolodex, you go through your phone. You'd be surprised at how much you can utilize the numbers in your phone, right? So you go through your phone and you say, I'm going to host a cooking night. I'm going to host a Shabbat lighting of the candles i'm gonna host um and it doesn't have to be like an elaborate cooking thing it can be like i'm baking one thing or let's let's just eat dinner together or you know you're probably interested in eating um or if you play music right i'm gonna have a jam session and ask just ask ask a lot of people and you only need one other person to do it there's also um things like meetup.com where you can, an Eventbrite, you can find, look up what, what it is, right? If, I mean, if it's in-person stuff, it's going to be hard. Maybe, I don't know, you can probably do dancing, dancing together online, right? Um, I don't know, you can get creative. So 
find, you know, uh, keep the stuff that you're interested in high level, right? Even if, let's say you like wine. Well, have a wine night in the park or a day at the beach or whatever. Um, you might you might not be able to do something really specific. You might be like, hey, I want to find someone to to weave a basket with me right now. But there, I'm sure there's a group of a group of people doing that somewhere. So, right. um, ask the people. Start with the people in your phone and in your email list. Videos and podcasts. Videos of non-public figures creating media together safely. Relationship advice. Wait, videos of non-public figures, what? Creating media together safely. I'm not sure what that means. Of non-public figures creating, so just, I guess, um, normal people creating media together, doing stuff, talking, videos of social gatherings. Yeah, I I guess creating media together, though, I guess. Just... um, recording each other i don't know a lot of relationship advice relationship advice videos of all the above when possible again more on location practicing free stuff everyone likes free stuff videos are great i have no income and no hope of restarting my profession for a long time so money is not flowing maybe a bit of all of this it would be interesting to see how people approach others and see if it works I guess during the pandemic. Well, there's no difference of pandemic or no pandemic. Um, Just a little bit of difference in what you might say and you might have a mask on and you might be six feet apart. (laughs) (laughs) Sure. Skills training tailored for the present moment with masks, with fear, how to navigate and break through this moment in a positive way. Okay. Well, the video I just made, I think covers some of that new kinds of copes. I enjoy the weekly emails being sent out by Jaunty and the video posts on the Jaunty Facebook page. I can't wait for the specialized skills classes to resume. Hell yeah. Maybe we'll do some specialized skills classes via Zoom. Tips for transplants. Anything. Skills training and interviews. Looking forward to a time when I can attend an in-person workshop. Relationship advice. Online courses more consistent EDMS. Um, Insightful pointers and challenges. What's EDMS? Um, I think it's kind of like BDMS, but um, with Eric. (laughs) (laughs) So let me look at it. Uh, I think it's marketing, digital marketing. Electronic document management system. Oh, uh okay (laughs) maybe it's something different that they're looking for before joining the in-person six-week program i scanned the entire jaunty blog for principles exercises and beta if i had a choice i would have liked to find more concise pointers um i would suggest that since there is now an online course for jaunty another step would be design freebies and short free courses to capture more leads for example Okay, check out this company, The Breath. Okay, Facebook group, is that too gimmicky? Nevertheless, for any material, I must say Eric's teachings were the selling point for me. I understood, experienced, and connected to him and his teachings. Um, The thought note videos are great, although the filming detracted from polished feel of otherwise valuable material. Well, yeah, we're we're upping our quality here but it felt personal and intimate. I also liked hearing Eric's interview podcast he had with a friend in Texas, which is on YouTube. It helped me remember some of the things I learned in the course, which had faded from memory. Sending a lot of love to Jaunty. Awesome. Then one more media. Let's do it. Okay, man. We're doing it. Life coaching. Videos and life coaching. I took, I took the Jaunty workshop five or six years ago, and I noticed a lot more social confidence after I finished. Um, but... That has slowly gone away as I haven't consciously focused on it. I love video refreshers, eventually in-person refreshers, and exercises to help remind me to help practicing the skills. 
I'd like a quick reference to go back to when I'm heading to a party and want to make sure I have meaningful conversations. Yeah, bring your, bring your jaunty notebook. Take it with you. Read, go over your notes, meditate on those things. Some things something I've been doing in the class, Craig, is after um, about 20 minutes or 25 minutes of, of teaching and practicing, I would make it, I, I tried this in the class and, I, and this is something that helps me is I say, let's, let's take one or two minutes to, to review what we just, you know, close your eyes, review X, Y, Z that I just mentioned. Imagine you doing it yourself. Mm. Because since we, we give a lot of information out, it's hard to yeah. get it past our working memory and into our long-term memory. Um, videos about dealing with social isolation, newsletters, videos, relationship advice, skills training. Um, not sure which one of these would help me improve the most. Life coaching, specific dating skills, strategies and ideas, webinar recording. Boom, we're doing that right now. How to be more assertive, more activities on practicing assertiveness or tools and guidelines on the subject. Um, I enjoy what you're doing, Eric. You give good, practical, thoughtful tips with style, and I'm grateful for all. Um, oh, I lost it here. Okay. And I'm grateful for all I learned from you. Skills training and interviews. I just like, thank you, by the way. Uh, that means a lot. I just like the little email tips, social exercises. That's enough for me. I'm just reading these. I need to be more into it here. Yeah. I just wanted to get it across so everyone can hear it. But yeah, these are, these are awesome. You know, this is stuff we want to give to people. Um, best way to network and make great connections, interviews, videos, all of the above. We're almost done. Not sure whatever works for me. I've only taken one class, but I can say um, it's a balance. It is, but I can say is a balanced class. Okay. Cool. Thank you, everybody. There's so much I want to do, um, like based off of these suggestions. I mean, actually, could you send me over a list, like a copy pasted list of all the, the responses of that, mm -hmm. of what they want us to do? I like there's so much I want to do. And there's just like so little time and resources. But I, I, you know, I think I think we could start like planning some of this stuff out like already like there's you know online classes we can give that are like one-off classes for specific things or or like you know boot camps and stuff like that that are online that would be totally really, um, and we're gonna do all that so um yeah no i think we we've learned a lot and i hope you've learned a lot knowing what other people are feeling and uh, yeah, you know, we're not alone. Everyone's going through this. And uh, we talked a little bit about some of the silver linings that have come from this, but also some of the really dark negative things that have, are coming from this. And um, this is a time of reflection and growth and health and, you know, um, really, really digging into what's important. So it's good in that sense. It's a little bit of a cleanse, a little bit of a repentance, maybe. But it's painful. And there's suffering. So wishing everyone the best. Yeah. Yeah. All right.